Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial on how to paint sunflowers. I thought I would do like a large up close and personal sunflower. It would be easy for you to see all the steps and not in time lapse, in real time. So I'm starting with a vermilion color first down at the base and that will also be our shadow color. And that's gonna go down at the base, like I said, and sort of in between all of the petals. And we're just gonna lay that in real quick and try to move as quickly as possible so that can dry a little bit. And I'm using an angle brush, um, which I like to use and I can get a fine point with that by turning it on its side, um, pushing and pulling the paint. So again, this is a vermilion just around the outer edge of the circle. And eventually we're going to work this up into the all the petals to give like a separation. So now I'm going into some yellow ochre. And we're gonna get that yellow ochre, mix it with a little bit of vermilion, and that will be um, the shadows in between the petals, the, the petals, this is a front petal, this is a back petal, if that makes sense. Um, so we're gonna differentiate those um, two petals by adding more shadow color, which is the vermilion mixed with the yellow ochre. And we're gonna do that in between, in between each separation of petal. And you can do a little bit on the front facing the top petal. So these are the petals that are behind. This is a front, front facing petal. This is a petal that's behind. We're laying in all of this shadow color first, and then we're going to go in. Um, I like to use dark first on my with my acrylics, and then the darker colors first, the shadows first, and then work into the lighter colors. Go around the edge of these petals. I know it looks sort of messy uh, to begin with, but this will give you the, the, the looks, the appearance that there is a depth, that there are layers of petals around the sunflower, the middle of the sunflower itself. I'm gonna start adding a little bit of the lemon yellow to the ochre. Because as we work out those petals on the outer edges will be lighter. I'm going to paint all the petals first that are in the back. all these petals are in that are in the back laid in first and 
and then we'll go back and add more detail on the front petals. So basically how I started this sunflower drawing is I am working on a 12 by 12 piece of watercolor paper and um, I found the center of the paper and I drew a circle in the middle which was here. There's a little smaller circle here that you can barely see and then I drew my petals. So each this circle um, this the second circle was about an inch larger than the um, the first circle. Um, so I measured this out about an inch away from the center. This circle was an inch away from that. And then this had sort of a very light circle outside of that. So it's all symmetrical. The middle, um, they're equal distance apart, if that makes sense. And okay. So I'm just going to get these. I'm adding a little bit of a white to this um, mix of the, um, the medium yellow and a little bit of the yellow ochre still. I like to work wet into wet, which means I'm not cleaning my paintbrush in between strokes. So if you can see, that starts to add a little bit more um, lighter on the tips, a lighter shade on the tips. So that's more of the um, light yellow mixed with a titanium white. All right, so I'm gonna go into the middle of the sunflower actually, and I'm gonna use a larger brush because I'm going to be covering more area. So what I have here is a, um, oh gosh, a burnt sienna color, and that's gonna be the middle of the sunflower. So I'm gonna lay that in. It's gonna be pretty dark, and it's gonna seem very odd at first, but that is, you want that darker color to make it seem like that um, that center of the sunflower, they're pretty dark normally. What that is actually, that's where all the seeds are. Um, and it is actually the middle of a sunflower has hundreds, if not thousands. The seeds are actually little blooms and they're pretty dark. And what you'll find in the middle it can range from a dark brown um, uh, to green, even a little bit of orange, depending on uh, the sunlight that's hitting it, where it's hitting those um, that middle part of the sunflower. So I like to use um, the um, the umber shades. Um, I'll even add a little bit of black, a little bit of yellow just to get some different shades, different variations in there, and um, even a little bit of green. So we're gonna come in and make that middle center of the sunflower even a little bit darker because that little center, it seems to be a little bit more recess where these are the, um, the seeds that haven't quite opened up yet, the flowers that haven't quite opened up. So moving out from the center, these this, the seed heads, the flowers usually open up first around the outer edge. 
and then in towards the center they're a little bit more recessed um, because they haven't quite opened up just yet. So we're going to blend those two. Um, it's doing a, uh, I'm doing a wet and wet on wet technique, which means you don't let the paint dry. You just keep adding layers and colors over the top of what you've already painted. And it's sort of like a hit skip motion with my brush. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of the yellow ochre into that outer edge so we can kind of get a little bit of like where the, the sunlight were coming from the upper right hand corner. It would have a little bit more highlight, a little bit more brightness up towards the top. And I'm going to get into the vermilion a little bit. I'll bring that highlight up even more. I'm going to go into um, a little bit of a hooker's green to kind of give that cast. Sometimes, you know, they're little seeds. Um, they'll have a little bit of a green cast when they haven't opened yet. But like I said, you'll see when the sunlight hits the middle of sunflowers, depending on what stage of development they are, those centers can have uh, green and yellow and um, all different sorts of color when the sun hits that spot, um, the middle of the sunflower. So let's see here. I'm going to add a little bit of titanium white to that vermilion um, burnt sienna mix. And I'm just going to daub here. A little bit more of the raw umber. And think of a little bit more green. And you can see I'm not 100% blending these colors because you want to see a little bit difference in those those colors from the yellow, um, the yellow ochre to the um, hooker's green. And this is a little bit of a brighter green even yet. And I'm going to go into the black, a little bit of black, and we're going to deepen this outer area of that sunflower. And look at the very middle here on this lower. A little bit more of the vermilion. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry down a little bit and go back into painting the petals. And I'm going to actually, um, let's see, 
I want to get into the vermilion a little bit more. So we're going to take that vermilion and we're going to push and pull it into the middle of the sunflower because we don't want this to be a solid break between the, um, the petals and the middle of the flower. I might actually have to let that dry down a little bit more. It's still pretty wet. This is a lot faster than what I normally work. Um, but I want to get this all in and show you quickly how to paint a sunflower. This is the front petal. One of the front petals. And we're going to go back in and sort of hit the interior with um, a yellow ochre mix mixed with that lighter um, lemon yellow because that front petal is going to be very very light we're going to add um, quite a bit of white and quite a bit of yellow around the edges of those petals so we can differentiate the one that's in front, the petals that are in front, versus the petals that are in the back. So again, right now I'm using um, a yellow ochre and a medium yellow. And concentrating that towards the center of these petals that are in the front. And not being extremely neat about this, I'm just laying in that color because we're going to come back and we're going to add detail after that dries down a little bit. But I think you can see already like the lighter shade of the petals that are in front versus the petals that we first painted that were in, you know, behind. And you want that little bit of a difference. so that it has the appearance that there are front and back petals. Okay, how's that looking? Is it looking like a more of a little bit of a sunflower? All right, so I am gonna go into adding a lot more of titanium white into this yellow mixture. And I'm going to start here at the top, push my brush, and drag it down in towards the middle, turn it over, and pull towards the center. Pick up a little bit more white, start at the tip again, and pull down. And what that does is that gives you a lot of great shading already without really doing a whole lot. Now, if you wanted to be um, really have this uh, sunflower appear to be exact, I'd be, you know, I'd want you to spend a whole lot more time. But this is a great quick way to give you um, the looks of dimension, the looks of um, there being shading and light and okay I'm gonna do the same thing with the next front facing petal
Okay, so we're just gonna keep adding, pulling that down into the middle, those brighter yellows, pushing it out, blending a little bit. <laughs> I picked up some red on there, that happens. No big deal. Guess what? It's only paint. If you make a mistake, it's no big deal. Let it dry down a little bit and go back and fix it later. Okay, so I'm just going to keep working my way around this sunflower. And the way you get the pet, the um, flowers and the petals to appear a little bit different because uh, if you look at a real sunflower, all of the petals, they are a little bit different. Some of them have um, a little um, broken tip at the end. Some of them might be, um, you know, have a little bit of a fold in the petal. They're all going to be different. All right, so very quickly, I'm just gonna keep um, pulling down into the middle. And when I get to the tip, um, around the middle of that sunflower, kind of pulling up a little bit of pressure on the brush. So that will give me more of, um, like to where it seems like the petals are not, you don't want to have like a straight solid line all the way around there. That doesn't look any sort of realistic at all. Um, so we're gonna blend that little um, dark line that I painted around the middle. And what I would do um, with this as I'm moving into um, finishing this sunflower is move into a smaller brush. Um, each time you go down um, in a smaller size brush, you're going to be adding, using that brush to add more and more detail. Um, you might want to add like a little bit of a fold in there, um, a little bit of a vein line. And I'm just going to keep working my way around this sunflower. And it's okay if um, it's okay if uh, I am doing it sort of backwards. Um, you could always turn your painting around um, upside down, you know, to work from the other side. But um, yeah, so I'm just gonna keep going. This is the last petal here that's in the front. And that line didn't come completely out like I would like it to. You can even add a little bit these petals that are behind where they're crossing that center, um, the middle. You can go back in and add a little bit of work the yellow um, down into the middle. As long as you don't completely go all the way up because then you would be blending the um, petals that are, that are in the back. You would be blending them completely with the petals that are in the front. There wouldn't be any um, you know, you wouldn't tell, be able to tell which petal went to what. There'd be no dimension. Um, so sometimes you have to stop what you're doing, step back and see, evaluate your work is what I'm trying to say. All right, so I'm gonna go back into 
a mix of even brighter um, yellow. Okay, I'm gonna let that kind of dry down a little bit. And I am going to, let's see, I need one size smaller brush here. There we go. All right, let's get myself organized here a little bit. And like I said, when you go into um, adding a little bit more of a finer detail, um, I always switch down to a smaller brush. The more um, surface area you are trying to cover in the beginning, the larger brush you're gonna use. As you move into more and more detail, um, you're gonna be switching to a smaller brush. You don't have to be so exact um, when you are trying to cover a lot of ground when you first start um, your initial painting. So you can have a larger brush because um, you're not adding a lot of detail. Covering more ground when you're first starting. So I'm using, I'm actually mixing <laughs> more of the yellow in with the vermilion. So I'm getting more of a, um, a brighter orange. Still a shadow color, still in between. Using that on the petals that are in the back. And pulling that down into the middle. So again, sort of breaking that line, that center line that is um, the brown that is the middle of the sunflower. Okay. So I'm going to move into back to that lighter yellow and I'm going to acrylics, especially yellows and reds, um, the pigments that they are made with are sheer. So they have to be done in layers. So I'm going back over those initial first um, petals that are in the back and I can see my pencil marks. You may not be able to see that in the, in the um, you know, from where you're looking at the sunflower, but I can see them and that always drives me crazy. Some, some parents, parents, some painters like to leave those pencil marks on there. Um, I tend to try and cover them up as much as possible. But I also don't like thick, globby acrylic paints. That's just me. That's how I like to paint. So I'm going to add, refine these tips a little bit more on these petals that are in the back. So you want to use, um, more water to refine your edges and less paint. So it flows a little, your paint and your brush flow a little bit easier. Okay, I'm gonna stand up here so I can get a little bit better perspective. I think some of these areas need to be a little bit deeper. So I'm refining those petals behind, but also what that does is that refines the edge between the two as well, between the petals that are in the front and the petals that are in the back. So 
you want there to be um when you're when you're painting you want to give the um illusion that there's depth that there's um movement that the this area is actually recessed so that's why you need those darker colors um so that your eye looks at it and goes, oh yeah, okay, so I get it. It's, you're taking, um, what you're doing is making something that is actually two-dimensional, which is just a flat painting on, on um, in this case, I'm using paper. Um, and it's making your eye read that as a three-dimensional object with your shading and your highlights. So I'm going to go into that brighter lemon yellow now. And do the same with the front petals. And that is just to refine those edges a little bit. Give it a little bit of a um, cleaner, crisper edge. And now I'm going to use back to the, um, the brighter mix of the lemon yellow and the white. We're just going to refine those edges on those front petals a little bit more. Add a little tiny bit to the very tip of the back petals as well. Can you see how that makes that coming down the edge of that um, front facing petal really helps to pop the difference between the rear petals and the front petals. Hopefully you can see the difference from where we started here to this side where I haven't added the, the white mix, the super bright white mix. Hopefully that is showing up for you. And that first spot there where I had some orange, I actually kind of like that was a mistake so sometimes you can leave those what you thought was a mistake originally and it actually works out for you okay so I'm gonna go like I said hit some of these petals some of the back petals with the brighter mix you don't have to hit every one let's get that a edge there to show up a little bit better And you're not 100% covering the front petals with this brighter mixture. You're just hitting it in spots. The tips, the edges. I need a little bit more water on my brush so that my paint flows smoother. Don't forget to come down into the middle a little bit.
in the middle of each sunflower petal um, has a sometimes they have little creases um, so just by hitting that area the outer edge and you can come in the middle a little bit just a tiny bit again we're not completely covering that um, what we've already painted because otherwise you lose all that depth um, that you started with underneath. The more white you add to a color, uh, especially like a yellow, the more opaque it will become. Let's fix that edge a little bit. And I want to use a little bit of the yellow ochre. To sort of, I feel like I lost some of those petals. So I'm going to put some of that back in. Just a touch. You don't have to completely cover that whole area. It will just give this suggestion of that um, back petal in the back. without losing the depth. It'll still make it appear that it's in shadow. Okay, so like this edge is still pretty straight on there. All right, so I'm gonna go back into the vermilion a little bit. And sort of blur that line a little bit more. That middle circle that we painted. So where the middle of the circle starts around the sunflower, um, and where the petals begin. I wanna kind of blur that a little bit more. And I feel like there needs to be a little bit more of that vermilion. So what I'm doing now is called dry brushing. So there's just a little tiny bit of paint on there. You can see it's barely coming off on my finger. And just sort of using a swat, um, side to swat, side, I can't even talk, side to side motion, up and down, and dry brushing that middle and around the edge. And I'm gonna go into the green. A little bit more green needs to be in there, do you believe? And I'm gonna do the same thing with the green. Side to side, up and down, dry brush. You can hear me scruffing the paint. If I had a lot of paint on there and it was really creamy consistency on my brush, you would not hear that sort of scratching. All right. Do a little bit more of the vermilion around here. And we're gonna blur that line between the very center of the sunflower to the outer. So a lot of this is by eye, so you're just going to keep painting, keep adding, um, looking at your reference material, uh, pictures that you've got to get a realistic semblance of a sunflower. And I feel like this center could use a little bit of a highlight, so I'm taking some white and mixing it with um, the burnt sienna. Let's go around this edge a little bit. 
clean up some of that highlight and give the appearance of there being um, seeds in there. So now I have some burnt umber on my brush. Let me go back into the black. So I'm losing this little area right here. I want that to be deeper. So this area appears more recessed than this area. That is what I'm aiming for. And you add that back in there, a little bit of black, scruff it in there, and it'll make that area appear down in the center a little bit more. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. I still feel like there needs to be a little bit more colors here. A little bit of the orange. Um, I might even add some of the um, some of the yellow ochre into the vermilion. Because again, we want the sun to appear to be coming down this way from the upper right onto that sunflower. So we want there to be sort of a brighter appearance. So I'm using a little bit of yellow added in. I do really like to add that green on the sunflower because I just think it makes it appear more lively. Yeah, let's see here. I think we're doing pretty good here. A little bit more of the burnt umber, the upper. Okay. So if you wanted to get very, very, very detailed on this, um, I would even switch to, oh, I dropped my brush, a lot smaller of a brush. Still has that angle. And I'm going to go into um, a mix of burnt umber and the yellow ochre. And I'm just going to sort of refine these edges down here towards the center and use a little bit of a watery mix so that it seems, so it flows off of your brush easier is what I would like to say. And I'm pulling that towards me while it's on the other side. Working away from me, you can push a little bit. You can even put that down in the middle of the front um, facing petals if you like.
And this is also how you know you're just about finished with a painting is um, the less you feel you need to change anything, the more you know you're getting to the end of a painting. Actually, I think, let's see here. Now I want to go and get a really nice highlight. And just hit some of the edges. I think we're just about finished. If you have any comments, questions on how to do something um, pertaining to the sunflower, if you um, just drop a comment, ask me the question, and I'll come back and answer you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this sunflower painting. I know I did. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate your time. Um, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.